subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Hello and welcome to The Print. I'm Snehish Alex Philip and you're watching The Defense Tracker. Today, we have traveled all the way to Punch from Delhi to get you a glimpse into the life of a soldier, the various duty that a soldier does. What you see behind me is actually the Pakistan occupied Kashmir. In February uh, this year, that is on the 24th of February, both India and Pakistan had announced a ceasefire which means that guns have fallen silent. Otherwise, the helipa the area that I'm currently in at, a one, at one of the battalion headquarters is an area which witnesses shelling on really on a daily basis. But since, uh, since the ceasefire from February 25 this year, the guns have fallen silent. However, the, the army continues to remain vigilant because of the anti-infiltration grid that they have because there are they continues the, uh, the terrorists coming in and infiltration continues to remain a concern in the last few days there have been two cases where infiltration has uh, taken place in which uh, two uh, soldiers have also lost their lives even as the guns have fallen silent the army continues to maintain a strict vigil 24 into 7 as part of the anti-infiltration duty the soldiers continue to carry out patrols and set up ambushes along the line of control. I am right now in what is known as a communication trench. This communication trench is used to move uh, around when there is shelling. The idea is that the soldiers should not be in the open and they use this particular trench to ensure that they are safe from this shelling. Uh, we are right now with a unit of the Indian Army which is conducting a, a mock exercise of uh, patrolling along the uh, LOC. Now these soldiers as you can see have ballistic helmets uh, with them along with of course the AK-47 that you see on the screen right now. Uh, you also have uh, soldiers with uh, you know knee pads as well as uh, other guards to ensure that you know minimal injuries is caused in case uh, they fall down besides these rifles the indian army has also uh, gone ahead and inducted the uh, sig 716 rifles from the us these are the latest uh, rifles that have been procured by the indian army and has been given to the frontline soldiers uh, the soldier here is actually having a SIG rifle, this is a SIG uh, 716 which has a sight system also installed uh, on it and all these soldiers, uh, uh, this particular soldier here has the Dragunov uh, rifle which is a Russian uh, you know, sniper rifle. Remember that the army is now in the process of upgrading these uh, sniper rifles, these Dragunov sniper rifles. There is actually an Indian firm, Triple uh, S Defense from Bangalore which has come out with a solution. Uh, besides Triple S Defense, the Russians have also offered Indians an upgrade uh, for the Dragunov rifles which will ensure that they have, uh, you know, uh, longer uh, life along with better sights uh, and of course you know other equipment that could be uh, deployed on it now uh, this is a trench that is there this is actually a, a tactical trench which is used by uh, by the army uh, you can go uh, this is this is a long one you you can enter and move to the forward areas uh, through this particular tunnel so this is a tactical tunnel that is actually used by the army the army has to constantly train itself to fight the enemy. A startling fact is that army has less firing ranges to train. Along the LOC, the soldiers fine tune their tactical firing at a makeshift firing range. The print also traveled to forward most post of the army in the Bimber Gully sector and visited villages along the LOC. Now this is what a modern infantry uh, soldier looks like in the Indian Army along the LOC. Now what you see here is the 6716 rifle that has been procured from the US. While the rifle did not come with any sights, the Army has now uh, gone ahead and fitted it with uh, a sight that has been designed, developed and manufactured by the Tata Park SED. Now besides this, the army, uh, the soldiers also now wear a 
new kind of uh, bulletproof jackets. These bulletproof jackets weigh around uh, 3.2 uh, kilograms and are much lighter than the traditional bulletproof jackets uh, that were used by the soldiers, which weighed much more, making it uh, you know too uh, cumbersome and troublesome for the soldiers to move. Along with this, this is actually a ballistic helmet, uh, which protects the soldiers from uh, any kind of sharpness or, uh, uh, or and besides, of course, direct gunfire. Now, uh, earlier, you know, the soldiers used to wear something called patka. Patka is a system which is which has round iron cladings, uh, you know, with cloth over it, so it protects the forehead but did not give the complete protection uh, that was needed to the soldier. Uh, besides this, of course, he also has the tactical uh, knife. These are the pouches that are uh, that is there for uh, the extra ammunition. However, one interesting aspect that comes with this uh, jacket is the fact that this uh, the, uh, that there is a you know we always wonder you know how does a soldier manage to go on uh, in these operations without any water, and this is actually a water uh, uh, bag which is there on his back. This this holds water. And this is actually fitted with a pipe that the soldier can use uh, to uh, suck in water whenever he feels thirsty. As part of the surveillance system, the army has installed a number of high-tech cameras along the LOC. These cameras have night vision capability and has been set up to monitor infiltration attempts. Uh, we are getting you an uh, you know uh, unprecedented access to the surveillance uh, room uh, located at one of the forward locations near the LOC that is the line of control. What you right now see on the screen is actually uh, Pakistani uh, uh, positions. This is these are uh, you know high tech cameras which have uh, night vision capability, which have uh, infrared capabilities that have been fitted on the screen right now is actually a Pakistani post. As you can see, uh, the soldier here can zoom in on these uh, on these Pakistani posts, and uh, there are several cameras that have been now installed at various locations along the LOC. Uh, this also to uh, keep a check on the infiltration attempts that take place. So this is, for example, this is a traditional infiltration route as far as the terrorists are concerned. Uh, similarly, uh, cameras have been placed in multiple locations. But remember that these cameras are, are not able to cover the entire area. There are still loopholes that are there uh, which allow uh, the infiltrators, the Pakistan army to push in uh, terrorists into the Indian side. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you know, this is an area which witnesses heavy ceasefire violations. I'll, uh, I'll now showcase you some of these, uh, you know, uh, the shells and parts of the, uh, you know, of various mortars as well as missiles that are fired by uh, the Pakistani army to target Indian positions. For example, uh, you know, this is the uh, tail fin of an 81mm mortar. Uh, which was fired by uh, the Pakistani army. Similarly, this is the tail fin of a 120 uh, mm mortar. Now, uh, these mortars, uh, you know, besides of course being uh, used for explosion, since these come with, uh, you know, iron castings, they also end up becoming splinters, you know, which, uh, which injures soldiers. So many of our soldiers have actually lost their lives, not due to the direct hit of the Pakistani uh, firepower, but also because of the shrapnels that have been there. For example, this is a 105 mm uh, explosive that has been used, as well as this is the remains of uh, you know uh, the uh, the the launchers that have been used by the Pakistani army to target the Indian positions. The print travelled further to the LOC. There are a number of villages which lie ahead of the anti-infiltration obstruction fence, but within the Indian Territory. On day two, I am in the Bimber Gali's general area or commonly known as the BG sector. This is one sector which sees a lot of ceasefire violations taking place. Uh, if you see uh, on, the, on your screen, what you will uh, see is the AIOS system. This is the anti-infiltration obstruction system. It's, it's kind of a fence that has been uh, set up by the Indian Army. Uh, beyond this particular fence, you can see houses there. These are actually villages on the Indian side. Uh, but these houses are beyond this fencing, but, uh, you know, uh, but away from the LOC. That, that is a line of control. 
Now, if you, if I'll ask my video journalist to pan onto the other side, and what you now see on the screen, the hilltops are actually the Pakistan-occupied Jammu and Kashmir. The houses that you see on these hilltops are those, you know, uh, Pakistani houses, and uh, these houses, most of these houses, are also used by the Pakistani army for carrying out infiltration and for carrying out ceasefire violations. Now, interestingly, this is also the very same sector that was used by the Pakistan Air Force on the 27th uh, of February 2019, uh, a day after the Balakot strike, where they flew in and targeted and dropped payloads, that is, uh, bombs, uh, near the uh, you know the brigade headquarters uh, here in the BG sector. So what we'll now do is we'll now take you to. Uh, beyond this particular fence that I have spoken about so that you get a glimpse of the fence about the life uh, of the villagers here at the same time we will also uh, go ahead and uh, visit the leaving headquarters uh, of the uh, Indian Army soldiers to get you a glimpse of how the soldiers live how they operate and we will also try and go as close as uh, to the LC possible. Remember yesterday I was in a different sector at that time there were higher cases of possible case of sniping so the army had asked us to wear bulletproof vest and uh, ballistic helmets uh, but right now there is a complete ceasefire in motion and there is no such activity that has been witnessed so far. Uh, uh, so yes now we'll, we'll go ahead and visit some of the forward locations here. What you see on the screen right now is the same fence that I was talking about uh, earlier, this is the anti-infiltration, uh, you know, fence that has been set up a little away from the uh, line of control. As you can see, this is a proper fence with barbed wires and it has uh, cameras along with a number of uh, sentry uh, posts. Now, this fence, you know, as I mentioned earlier, there are villages which are ahead of this particular fence. For example, in this area that I'm currently in, uh, there is a population of nearly about 5,000 people who stay ahead of this fence within the Indian Territory uh, and this particular fence has a, a proper check post under which anybody who comes from that village he has to uh, show his documents, his, his entry is made and similarly any vehicle which needs to go in also is properly checked. Now another interesting aspect of this particular fence is that uh, the army has now introduced a narcotics uh, sniffer dog. Uh, this uh, this particular dog was detected about six months back. It's a uh, it's a lab, and uh, this was primarily inducted because narco terrorism had become a major issue. Now there have been cases in the past where villages, uh, you know, which is closer to the LC, have tried to smuggle in uh, narcotics, especially heroin, which is then sold off to uh, other, uh, you know, which is sold off to various parts in Jammu and Kashmir, as well as uh, in other countries too. For the army, there is no respite, even as the guns have fallen silent. If death strikes before I prove my blood, I swear I'll kill the death. That is the motto of the Indian Army soldiers here at the forward observation bunker. This is the forwardmost bunker of the Indian Army in the BG sector and what you see in front is the Pakistan occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Now, uh, this is a bunker from which an observation is done. These are bulletproof glasses uh, that can withstand uh, shrapnels as well as direct uh, fire by LMGs and small weapons. This is the uh, this is a system that has been uh, used by the Indian Army. This system is an indigenous one developed by Tata Advanced Systems. Uh, this gives this has night vision capability. And, uh, and the soldier is able to see whatever that is there on the camera on this particular screen. So as you can see, uh, today's uh, date and time of course, the time that we're shooting today has been mentioned here. This gives you an entire idea, uh, uh, look into the forward, uh, into the Pakistan deployment and all kinds of movement that take place. Now, uh, of course, the soldier here, uh, you know, present here also has his own rifle. There is also, uh, uh, you know, shoulder launched uh, um, uh, rocket launcher system that is there, which is used in case of an attack. And then, of course, you know, this is the this is the entire area. Uh, uh, this is how a bunker at a forward location looks like. Well, you know, this might look like a normal fence for you, and what you see in the front also looks like a very normal fence. 
but these are actually anti missile screen the purpose of uh, having this uh, you know set of uh, iron bars in such a manner is to ensure that any incoming missile that has been fired from the enemy who's just across uh, this uh, screen takes the initial pressure uh, the impact and ensures that the soldiers receive minimal damage the particular post that i am in has been under target by the pakistani uh, forces uh, several times as i mentioned earlier this is one of the most forward uh, location uh, that the print has got access to beyond uh, this wall lies pakistan occupied jammu and kashmir the soldiers have a tough life at the loc and the biggest threat to the life here are the sniper shots by the enemy and shrapnels of tens of mortars and rockets that are fired by the enemy on a daily basis every forward post of the indian army has anywhere between 15 to 25 uh, soldiers uh, posted there uh, right now we are at uh, one of the forward locations uh, and at this post of course uh, what you see on the screen is uh, the uh, the area where the ration uh, for the forces are kept you know uh, as you can see uh, this is the room where the rations are kept you of course have uh, you know the daily ingredients like oil atta uh, rice which is there and of course uh, you know milk is there and fruits uh, that are also meant for the soldiers from bananas uh, pineapple to mosambi and mangoes too and of course you also have uh, the ammo also kept here uh, remember that this is uh, this is a store room kind of a uh, setup and now we'll move to the cooking area which is right next to it uh this is the place where uh you know soldiers in this particular post cook their food and they eat uh, of course being uh, being a forward post we can't uh, give out details of where exactly we are or show you any soldiers but this is where the soldiers eat uh, they eat as uh, one family so uh, and in this is the same food that is prepared for uh, a jawan as well as an officer who's uh, posted to a uh, forward uh, post now we move on to the living quarters uh, this is uh, a living quarter at one of the forward post what you see here is kind of a uh, defensive mechanism that has been made up of stones to ensure that in case any uh, mortar or shells falls there are no splinters uh, which enter this living uh, quarter uh, we uh, this is this is this is how the soldiers live there are two beds here of course along with sleeping bag you can see one of the rifles uh, right there this is where the jawans actually sleep and uh, at the forward locations as you can see it is a very tough life uh, for a soldier especially when he is posted at the borders and indeed more so when you are posted at the loc which sees constant ceasefire violations Uh, the biggest threat uh, to the soldiers here are, is not uh, the uh, the direct fire but is actually the splinters which are caused because of uh, uh, the mortar shells and other projectiles that are fired so this is as i said is the living quarter you have uh, three four such living quarters both over ground as well as underground depending on the sensitive area where it where the particular post is located but yes uh this is this is how a soldier spends his uh day at the loc another interesting aspect of a forward post is that you will always find dogs uh, you know in the forward uh, post these are uh, regular uh, desis or let's say the himalayan uh, dogs depending on the location uh, most of these uh, post would have uh, such dogs the army takes care of them feeds them why this dog is important is because it is able to detect any kind of movement that happens during the day for example if there's a stranger uh, for example as you can see on the screen the dog is trying to smell me from afar but because i am with the soldiers he knows that uh, i am friendly and not a foe so but otherwise in such situations what happens is that the dog is able to sniff out the presence of a particular uh, of an enemy or any stranger and it quickly alerts the sentry on duty 
by barking. So uh, having dogs is a very common feature uh, in in the in in various uh, uh, locations, not just at the forward post along the LOC, but also in the hinterland where the army continues to conduct uh, a number of counter-terrorism and counter-insurgency operations. This is Snesh Alex Philip reporting from Poonch and Bimba Gali sector along the line of control. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel for more such ground reports and in-depth stories.